big topic, specifically recently with 2020, 2020 being a very special year for all of us. But I do remember a time before I joined Microsoft, my early years in IT, when I worked for companies where I literally had to take the backup tapes from week one, put it in my backpack, go into the tram in Zurich, go to Parada Plots, and then put it in the vault in Credit Suisse and take week two tapes out, back on the tram, back to the office to run our backup. But Azure really provides you this as a service. So nobody has to jump on the tram and you can, Again, like just from a pure business continuity standpoint of view, it is fully automated. It's a one click backup solution for your VMs and databases. It does protect from ransomware and human resources. And I know big enterprises also have very automated system on premises, but they also cost a lot of money. But specifically in Switzerland with a lot of KMU, uh, KAMUs, you have like companies that have literally an external backup drive on top of the server in the same rack, and that's the backup they do. And eventually maybe somebody takes it home over the weekend or they forget. And again, this is all taken care of it. So to me, this is like a no brainer solution for pretty much anyone where it's super easy, it's cost efficient to use. So you see it can save you up to 47% uh, of the infrastructure costs if you have a big, big backup solutions that you run. And it does allow you to recover data and apps quickly and in a reliable way. But also here, Thomas, why don't you show us how this actually looks, the solutions that I praise so much here? Absolutely, we will have a quick look because working with many of our customers here uh, in the past and also currently, um, we know that this is one of the services which is kind of like a a super fast win, right? Um, we have seen that like like backup and disaster recovery, these are troubling things you need to think of, you need to have testing in place, you will hopefully never need them, but when you need them, they actually need to work, right? And so there's a lot of things going on, a lot of complexity with all that, a lot of costs involved as well. Um, so I'm going to show you a quick solution when it comes to disaster recovery. Now, the thing I'm going to show you is basically based on Windows Server or Azure Stack HCI, if you will. And I'm going to use a tool called Windows Admin Center, which is basically our web-based management tool that you can loc locally install to manage all your Windows servers and Azure Stack HCI clusters uh, and so on. It also allows you then to onboard the hybrid services if you need to. Uh, that said, you don't need to use that. So if you have a VMware environment, if you have a, a purely Linux environment or a Windows environment where you don't want to add another management product, you can still leverage these Azure services without using Windows Admin Center. However, Windows Admin Center is a really great tool. So if you're in charge of managing Windows, uh, Windows servers or Azure Stack HCI clusters, I uh, highly recommend that. So I'm going to show you here quickly how we can do a quick like replication of a virtual machine from on-prem, from a Hyper-V server in this case, running on-prem um, against Azure. Uh, keep in mind, again, just to say, to be very clear, this also works if you're in your VMware environment as well. Now, here I am in the Windows Admin Center. You can see here, this is a local installation, uh, and I'm here on my Hyper-V server, 01. This is a standalone server, but it works also with clusters. And if I scroll down, I can here go and manage my virtual machines running on that. So I get a quick summary um, uh, of what's going on. I get an inventory of all my uh, virtual machines. So I have here currently two virtual machines running, uh, four of them are here. So if I want to replicate one, what I would do is basically select the VM and then click very simply on Protect VM. Uh, you can see here that it's already connected in my case to an Azure subscription and to a location because I did it already. Um, the only thing I can then change if I want to, I can select another Azure storage account. And then what I would do is uh, Protect VM and then it would start the repli initial replication uh, to that specific uh, to Azure. Now I've done that already with our App01 uh, VM here. You can see here it shows protected, uh, which means the replication is now ongoing. So it continuously replicates changes to Azure. And if I click on it, it opens up the Azure portal with that replicated item. So I can see here now my App01 VM, the replication is healthy, uh, the status is protected. So I know that now the replication is in place. So now what I can do is, 
I can go in here and I can find again some more information about that specific server. Uh, again, I can see that it's healthy. I can see that like when the last replication was was like five seconds ago. And you can also see that I do need to do some additional uh, configuration. So it takes, for example, the name of the VM, but obviously I need to set a resource group. It also selects the size of the match, the Azure size, the Azure VM size, the matching one. And then obviously I need to select like which virtual network in Azure do I want to use. Now, again, for this demo, I'm not going to do that, but I want to show you two, three other things. Planned failover, failover, and test failover. So this virtual machine is now protected, right? And what I want to do now is I want to obviously make sure that the failover would work whenever I need it, right? Let's say the Hyper-V server is now like crashing. Um, I need to know that I can fail over that VM. So it's not crashing right now, so I want to test it. So I have a test failover. What that will do is it will basically um, create a isolated virtual network. Um, so it does not collide with any production workloads. It will create that virtual machine in Azure, will clump, and I can basically have a look at that VM and see if it's running. Um, this obviously also works. I can group different virtual machines. So I not just have like if I have dependencies from an application with a database server, for example, uh, I can also test that just, just to be clear about that. Um, I can then also do a failover. That is when actually the Hyper-V host would go down, right? So, or my data center goes down uh, or my branch office is not reachable, but I need that workload back up. So I would just hit failover. I would uh, already prepared everything. And in a couple of seconds and minutes, the virtual machine would be available running in Azure and I could basically go and access it through a VPN or an RTP connection or whatever I need uh, to make that happen. And then the last thing I think is also very interesting is doing a planned failover. So in some cases you want to, you know that there's for example, uh, data, data center maintenance coming up tomorrow, right? So you don't want to have any business impact on that. So what you can do is a plant failover. A plant failover that basically shuts down the virtual machine, replicates the latest changes to Azure, so you don't have any data loss, and starts up the VM in Azure. So in this case, you have a nice failover to Azure without any data loss, without any large interruptions. Obviously, you will have them until the changes are replicated. But that that's basically it. And then you can also go and fail that virtual machine back if you need to, if the if the data center comes back up. Um, so they have a couple of different options. And again, this is just a quick view how you can do that with a single VM. You can also do that with a um, list of different like with grouping of virtual machines. And if you have a large environment, you can also take um, advantage of a failover plan, which basically allows you to predefine like groups of virtual machines, which should start first. Then you can, for example, add a manual task, which you want to change something before you fail over the next group of virtual machines. Or you can even add an automated sc a script to automate the task. Like, so, okay, after the um, first, you want to, for example, fail over the domain controllers, then you want to fail over the database servers, then the application servers, then the web servers. And as soon as the web servers run over, you want to probably run a script which changes like a DNS entry or whatever. So you can do that very, very simply by creating a failover plan. Now, this is not just all we have when it comes to connecting your existing environment um, or your Windows Server environment um, uh, to Azure, right? There is also more. So one of the things we, we heard here a lot is it about when it comes to um, file shares, right? File shares, especially today where everyone works from anywhere basically is something we really need to have a look at. And we have a service there and I'm gonna show you that in a in, in a quick demo here uh, called Azure FileSync, which basically addresses those issues with Azure um, file share, uh, uh, not with Azure file share, with file shares in general and file service in general, right? So in this demo, I'm gonna show you and I'm gonna, before I show you the demo, I wanna quickly give you an overview of what we're actually doing. So we have a, this company, let's call them Tailwind Traders. They have a file server uh, running in the New York office, um, accessed by users and application, like completely normal file server can be Windows Server 2012 R2, for example, uh, or any of that. Uh, and they're working like that. So what they do now is they connect that file share to Azure files using Azure File Sync, and that gives them 
or immediately one advantage if they want to. They can enable cloud tiering, means that, for example, they can offload old files uh, which are probably never not changed since like, I don't know, 60, 30 days. Uh, they don't want to store them on their New York file server anymore um, to take it, like take advantage and free up space on that file server. However, the files are still there. They're just on the Azure file share. And for the user, it looks like the file is still sitting on that file share. And as soon as the user clicks on it, it will take a little bit longer to open because it will download the file in the background. However, it does not take any space on the machine, right? And I know that many of us, we know when we manage file servers, um, we have a ton of old files which were never touched and still take, it, uh, take away stored space. Now, another advantage I already get is cloud access. Now, since this is an Azure file share, I immediately can access that Azure file share if I want to from, for example, Azure machines or also external from Azure. So I can do that as well. And then what, we also want to do is, for example, we have two locations. So Tailwind Traders in this case, uh, this company has two uh, locations, one in New York and another uh, in Seattle, and they have a second file share. However, they want to have the exact same files available on that. And so they can use Azure File Sync to basically synchronize the files and changes from these two file servers. Now, another troubling thing is comes to <laughs> comes to files uh, is backing them up, right? We need to have long-term backups um, uh, of these Azure files, and we need to make sure that we basically protect them. And usually you know what that means is a lot of tape management and stuff like that, so we will need to have tapes. Why not use Azure Backup to backup all these file shares? Because we already have them uh, on an Azure file share, right? So we can actually backup these files from there. So uh, we can use, a, can use Azure Backup for that. And then another thing is what we then also get is for example, rapid file server disaster recovery. So let's think about that file server goes down. Uh, what we did in the past is basically would say, okay, send all the users home, we will restore that file share, and maybe even if they come back tomorrow into the office, they can work again, right? Now, this time with Azure FileSync, this is a little bit different. Now we can just set up a new server. We can then basically connect the Azure file sync agents and synchronization will start immediately. So in a couple of seconds and minutes, um, all the metadata will be restored. So we will not download all the files, but we will show all the files to the users um, and they can start back to basically accessing these files, right? So you can basically click on it and then it will download the file in the background. So for that, I want to show you a demo how that actually looks like. So here we are on our file server one, the one running in New York. Um, and you can actually see here, we have a couple of different folders here. We have, for example, the super important files folder uh, where we stored a couple of different files. And then obviously we have a couple of other uh, folders as well for engineering and marketing. Now, if I go to the um, Azure portal, I already did set up a uh, Azure File Sync uh, vault, basically, and an Azure uh, Sync group. And here you can see here that there are two endpoints right now. The one is the cloud endpoint, which is the Azure File Share, and the other one is the server endpoint, which is basically my file server zero one. And you can see here that's the path to the file share I'm synchronizing. So that is already synchronized. So if I go now to that specific Azure File Share, what I can see now here is that file share. And if I click on this, you will see, I can see here all my folders I just showed you, like the super important files folder, as well as the engineering and marketing folders. And if I do changes um, on prem, those will be reflected on that Azure file share, right? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add the file server two, which is based in Seattle. So I'm connecting um, uh, again here quickly to show you, this is file server one. Um, I'm creating a new folder. And then I'm creating it folder one. And just to prove to you that it actually synchronizes, I will go back to the Azure portal, do a quick refresh. And now you can see here, folder one is synchronized. So the synchronization between um, file server one in New York and the Azure portal or the Azure file share is working. So now I wanna add a second endpoint. And so I'm going to add our file server two 
uh, which is basically our blue server here. You can see here I created a share already. I created a folder for the share, but there are no files and folders in it uh, because I want to take over the files which we have in New York, right? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going uh, to the Azure portal. Again, quick to have a look at the endpoint here. And then um, I'm switching again to Windows Admin Center. Now, Windows Admin Center here will show me the different servers. I can manage them remotely. Um, and here uh, I now want to add server two, right? So server one is already um, syncing. So I'm going to file server two. And on the left side here in the menu, you can see that I have Azure File Sync. I can now click on this and now we can basically create the setup process for this. So again, if you want to listen to all of that in a little bit more quiet, you can do that right here. It links the video, but I want to now set up that server. So what I need to do is basically deploy an agent on it and Windows Admin Center will do that for me. So I will tell them, okay, download the agent, install the agent. And then also use, for example, Win Microsoft Update or Windows Update to basically keep that agent up to date because it always gets new uh, features available uh, as well. And then with the, this again, download the and install that agent. And the next step, what I can do now is I need to actually connect it to the sync service I just showed you in Azure, right? So I will need to log in with my Azure account. It will connect and it will then need to select the subscription. I'm actually uh, where my sync, um, sync service is hosted, the resource group, and you can see here the file sync um, 01. I'm going to register now that specific server. And so I will have that endpoint basically connected uh, to my um, sync service. So this will take a couple of, of minutes again to complete, but now you can see here it's set up. Now what I can do here is I now want to initiate the sync, right? Again, you can have multiple servers, not just two. You can have multiple endpoints. So now I need to select this new registered server and add it to the right sync group and then select the different path. I can then also here, you can see here, configure the cloud tiering. And if I do that, I get different options. So I can say, hey, I will always want to keep 20% of the local volume free. So it will offload the oldest, the older files. And then I can also say, hey, um, which files should be cached? So all the files yeah, younger than 60 days, basically, um, or newer than 60 days will be cached on that server and will be immediately available even without internet connectivity. But as soon as I, the other files could be offloaded. Now I switch back to the server and you can see here, it already synced all my folders. So even folder one, which I just created, is, these are now available on all of my servers. So to just show you that, let's create folder two. I'm very creative here in this case. Um, so I have folder two. If I now go back to my Azure file share and I do a quick refresh here in the portal, you will see here that I now have folder two. And if I now switch to my file server um, 01, which is the New York file server, the first one, green one. And if I do a quick refresh here in the Explorer, you can see here folder two was now also synchronized um, to that server as well. So very easy to basically keep all your file servers and synchronized um, over your environment. It's not limited to just two file servers. You can have multiple of these file servers for different locations. And the great thing, which I'm not going to show you right now, is also that you can leverage um, the new Azure file uh, integration with Active Directory. So you can actually go out and set it up that users can mount the Azure file share on their notebook directly over the internet and access it from there using the permissions they have with their Active, um, Active Directory and Azure Active Directory.